he and so he lives out of you know out of the area so um i said hey i'll, I'll just go over there and i'll check it out the tenants had just moved out um he's like it should be in pretty good shape i you know i think they uh i think they cleaned it up well and stuff and i walk over there and it's completely destroyed like complete exact opposite oh yeah i walk in and it's like it's Welcome back. We are once again with John Brodeen. Hey. I, I didn't realize how much of a tongue twister that was there, but I, <laughs> no, got, no worries. I got through it. Uh, how are you today? Uh, I understand you have a, a, a great story to tell us about a, a friend's place here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'll give you guys a little bit, bit, bit of background about this situation. So um, my client, he uh, had a few different investment properties in Grand Forks, um, a couple of apartment buildings and a couple of single family homes. And he lived out of the area hours away. He was constantly traveling for work. Um, but I helped him buy a couple of those properties only, um, only a couple years ago. And so he rented that single family home out and turned out the tenants, um, tenants weren't the best. Then COVID hit, a bunch of things happened and he needed to, uh, he needed to liquidate a couple of the apartment buildings and that single family house. Um, he had investment properties elsewhere that were doing good, but Grand Forks, his Grand Forks properties weren't doing so hot. So, um, he, and so he lives out of, you know, out of the area. So, um, I said, Hey, I'll, I'll just go over there and I'll check it out. The tenants had just moved out. Um, he's like, it should be in pretty good shape. I, you know, I think they, uh, I think they cleaned it up well and stuff. And I walk over there and it's completely destroyed. Like Com complete exact opposite. Oh yeah. I walk in and it's like, it's wrecked like they've tried to paint stuff themselves done a terrible job there's damage everywhere it's completely filthy they've left a bunch of their stuff behind a lot of stuff behind like the basement was full of stuff they had put up like a chain link dog kennel thing in the yard that was like falling apart um there was you know garbage all over the yard garbage stacked up on the berm like that, that sounds like almost a exact doomsday scenario yes yes um so and i was I, you know, obviously for him, it's like, oh, where do we start? Because um, he, I believe he was managing it himself from a distance and he's not going to be able to get to Grand Forks and take care of this stuff. So what I did is I handled all of this for him. So um, first off, we called in multiple contractors to get bids. We got cleaners in there to get everything cleaned up. We got uh, like a dumpster company to take uh, and then hired people to remove all the junk, haul it away. Um, including that dog kennel in the yard. Um, I'm trying to even remember because there was there was more stuff. I mean, there was there was junk everywhere. Uh, I, I was going to say, I, I, has this been a, a common or not so common thing before? Or do you have you kind of made some contacts with other various uh, companies to contact around town, kind of know the ropes in case if you run into this, who to get a hold and get over for a quick uh, or as quickly as it could for any openings for that kind of thing? Yeah, so I have my own rental properties. So I have connections through that to these type of companies. And then also it, it happens occasionally. Usually it's a uh, an owner who needs help with this kind of stuff. They've been living in the house and they, they have stuff they want to get rid of. They're trying to help get it cleaned up and I can connect them with these professionals. Um, but in this case, you know, he's out of town, so he's not living there helping with this. So it's, um, you know, I'm letting these contractors in, getting bids. We picked a contractor. Um, the tenants had completely like wrecked this downstairs tiled shower, um, completely wrecked it where they had busted tiles. They had tried to re tile the floor of the shower themselves. They didn't waterproof it. So water had been getting inside the wall. It was, it was a nightmare. So we had to get that completely ripped out, get a new shower put in, get a whole bunch of repairs and other things done. Pa had to get the whole house painted, had to get all new carpets put in, um, you know, dozens of other things. Um, so first we, first we got all the junk called out. Um, I got all the con or I got the workers that needed to get in there, in there, got the dumpster lined up and everything. Um, then we got contractors in to get bids. Um, I, meanwhile, I'm communicating with the owner the whole time, telling him what's going on. And originally he was like, Hey, I want to just get this place sold as quickly as possible. And I said, well, if you, if you, I know you only bought this thing a couple of years ago, and you're going to end up selling it for much less than what you bought it for versus if we get all this stuff taken care of and sell it in a move-in ready condition. Um, 
and even though it took a little, you know, it took a couple extra months to get all this stuff done, we were eventually able to sell it for over what he bought it for. And we were able to recoup that money back that he spent on getting it fixed up even. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's impressive. Sounds like you yeah, just taking that little extra time to do that extra work just to get it as good as new and paid yeah, off. Yeah, that, that'll always, selling a move-in ready type house will always pay off. Um, you got to do, you have to do everything that you have to do to get it move in ready, um, unless there's no other options. Um, but you know, in this case I was his boots on the ground. So we got all this work completed with the contractors, took a while, took a little while to get everything done. We had one contractor who didn't end up working out for us. So we had to get rid of him. I had to find a different contractor, got it all done, got my cleaning company in there, got it completely cleaned up got it listed and sold very quickly and sold it for, we sold it for over asking price, I believe. Um, we sold it very quickly and got him out of it. And then he had another, uh, another small multifamily apartment building that we were working on at the same time. And with this one, we were having a lot of issues with the tenants because it was, it was under rented. The mark, the rents were way below the market rents. And what we needed to do is we needed to fill these vacant units and we needed to get rents up. Um, probably a less experienced real estate agent would have just put it on the market as is, but it would have sat for a very long time because the rents that it was getting wouldn't have been able to justify the purchase price or the asking price. So I knew that we needed to get rents up in order to make this thing work on paper for whoever was going to be buying it. So worked with the property management company. This one was managed by a property management company. The single family home wasn't. Um, worked with the property management company, helped develop incentives and everything to get these uh, units rented at market rents, which would be able to give us the value that we wanted. Um, in in uh, multifamily properties, you kind of work backwards. It's um, the rents are always going to indicate the value. It's not um, you pick the value and then you make the rents match it. You know, the market rents um, and what the property is rented for is what is going to tell you what that property is worth. So you can't have the, you're not, you're not going to have the value. You're not going to get the full value without the money coming in. Make so, sure they do the, what they can and keep them in the black. Yes. Yeah. Nobody's going to buy a place that looks like a loser right off the bat mm -hmm. on paper. And if they are going to buy that, they're going to want a discount because they know they're going to have to go through a lot of work to update it. And that's the other thing that we did is we, we got the units that weren't in good condition updated. Um, this was less hands-on for me, but more just my, uh, overall, uh, helping with strategy of this. And then the property management company helps make it happen. And so we were able to eventually get that one, um, fully rented at market rents. I believe it, there might've been one, only one vacant unit when we sold it. And that vacant unit was nice and moving ready so that it was going to be easy for the next owner to rent out. And um, we were able to get it sold in less than a week on market over asking price. If so, with both of these properties, I don't think an experienced realtor would have known where to start and they probably would have put them both on the market as is and they would have had to practically give them away to get anybody to be willing to buy them. And it probably would have taken even longer until you actually found that buyer who had the guts to put in such a lowball offer uh, to get a move to begin with. Um, and Instead, we, we held off, we were patient, we held off, got the things done that needed to be done, put them on the market when they were actually ready to be put on the market and got a, an excellent result because of that. So that's one of the situations, um, some people don't realize how in depth we can go in our service for people. Um, you know, these aren't super expensive properties. You know, the house was like a $140,000 house or something like that. Um, but we're able to go above and beyond. This guy was a loyal client to me. He'd used me many times, uh, friend as well. And so we were able to make a lot of stuff happen for him that your average agent wouldn't have been able to. And it, it sounds like just taking the time to put in the extra work, mm -hmm. it just take that few extra months or however long it may be gives and the extra profits you make it from it, from the new tenants at the new asking uh, renting prices pays off for it. And then some in the long run. Yeah, it does. Yep. And, and, you know, now the property, I know the guy who bought it as well. Um, and it's been running great for him. You know, it's, it's been a good property. So it, you know, it, um, we solved a lot of problems in that situation. And the key is there, you've got to know what's best. You've got to know it's better to take the time to get this stuff done and then sell it to have success rather than to just be in a rush to try to get a quick sale and throw it on the market as is without doing all that work and taking all that time. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a kind of a similar experience, if you don't mind me sharing it with yeah. you. 
And it, it does, it points out the importance of, you know, having somebody like you that knows the good contractors and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, just because when I got uh, my house, my basement uh, bathroom was just starting to stink really, really bad. And we, we thought uh-huh. maybe it was like the backed up sewer. So we had them snake out the toilets and everything. Well, we come to find out that the previous owner decided to, you know, slap things over existing to try to try to try to make it look mm-hmm. good to sell. And we found out that they didn't actually um, platform underneath the, the shower. Oh. So when they tore out the shower, you could see that there was just a pipe stuck down in the drain. So what happened is all this water was building up underneath it. And now we started to have black mold on the concrete yeah. behind the shower and everything. Well, then we ended up gutting it and having to remodel the entire bathroom. And in the process, we found a book that said um, it was a home repairs for dummies book. <laughs> but, you That's know, too ironic. That's hilarious. <laughs> but, you know, if you if you're talking to somebody, you know, you have the contractors that you knew that went into this place beforehand. You can you can, you know, validate that. Hey, the work that has oh, been yeah. done here is is legit. And like with that single family house, we ran into that, you know, maybe somebody would, re- you know, somebody who doesn't care and just wants to get it done quickly, doesn't care if it's done right, would have said just, well, they're not going to know about that water issue. They're not going to know it's not waterproof. Just make it look good and sell it as is. But we said, no, we, we need to sell somebody a quality product that we can stand behind. So we decided to do it the right way. Yeah, I think the term and is what, lipstick on a off. pig? Yeah. You know. Pe- you know, yeah. Smart people will usually recognize that. Sometimes it can be hidden pretty well, but it's eventually going to hurt your name if you go around doing that sort of thing. Your reputation is going to suffer as a landlord for this owner and as well as a realtor for me. Yeah, you don't definitely don't want to go around just duct taping things together essentially. No, <laughs> there's there's people around with that reputation and you know they've they've earned it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's the way it is. You you definitely want to keep your reputation clean and sell quality products and be able to sell things that you stand behind. And, and like you're kind of referencing on, on, on the past Wednesday show that, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, uh, building credit, credit score, but in this case, building actual uh, cr- credentials on, on past work. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. This is a very valuable experience, you know, be, going all through that because you don't run into a situation like that every day. But, uh, you know, whenever I run into a situation like that, I can fall back on that experience with this situation and uh, I'll know exactly what to do again. Yeah, so. that definitely sounds like a, a big, big uh, learning experience that will come in handy for, yeah. for hopefully not, not, that, not that of a common thing there. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. So, so as we wind down here, do you got any big plans here that we survived this crazy last week or so of this oh, never-ending blizzardish type weather? Yeah. Big plans to look forward to for the weekend? Um, I don't think we've got much going on this weekend, which my life has just been insane lately, so I don't mind that at all. It'll probably be a lot of... Uh, work on the computer at home and that's about it so yeah. nice nice same here yeah just just ch- ch- chill relax at home i'm going to a und basketball game this weekend here going to see the big und ndsu rivalry there oh, so nice, nice. yeah That'd hopefully that should pan out all right but uh, how, how can people get a hold of you yeah so if you want to learn more about me and uh, i post a lot of short videos on instagram just explaining a ton of different real estate topics trying to make it entertaining and uh educational check me out on instagram john brody and realtor um also check out my business Facebook page. I've got a YouTube channel. You can find me anywhere on social media. If you want to become a client, you're thinking about making a move this spring, this summer, um, even sooner than that, uh, give me a call or give me a text, 701-213-5428. So. Gotcha. Well, thank you very much, John. And yeah, thank-, thank you. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Yeah, yeah, you as well. And thank you to producer Paul. And that is a wrap for the Friday edition of the Berkshire Hathaway podcast. We'll be back next Wednesday here with you guys. So please, everyone, tune in then. We'll see you next week.